We're going to have a discussion right now about freedom and which political party is doing best to defend our freedoms with four guests. Joining us now, Christian Ziegler is a Sarasota County Commissioner in District 2 and the Vice Chair of the Republican Party of Florida. Mike Deason is a former reporter, author, and an independent journalist. Deborah Tamargo is the immediate past president of the Florida Federation of Republican Women. And Tara Newsom is an attorney and a political science professor at St. Petersburg College. And it's great to see all of you. We're going to start with an opening 90-second statement uh, from both sides. And let's start with Christian Ziegler. Christian, which party best defends freedom? Well, I think it's very easy to, to answer, Rob. And I appreciate you having us on. This will be a good discussion. But when you look at the Republican Party, uh, we believe in the individual. Uh, the Democrat Party believes in big government. We believe in the individual. And specifically, we believe that every American, no matter how they start, has the opportunity to achieve the American dream through setting goals and through hard work. And that's what our party believes. Now, when you look at the state, what has happened in the state with Governor DeSantis, who's really the lead Republican here in Florida, is during COVID, we kept businesses open. We kept people back to work. We got kids in the classroom as quick as we could. We got the mask off our children. We got CRT out of the classrooms recently. Um, and then he's also protected women against this, this war on women that's going on in our schools, specifically in terms of girls sports and also boys using girls bathrooms. So what we're doing is the Republican party believes in that individual and protecting them. And I'll tell you, it's working. If you look here in Florida, I think we're the number one state when it comes to domestic migration. Um, states like California are losing people for the first time in their history. I, th I know they had a U-Haul shortage in uh, California. And then when you look at voter registration, we're at uh, when Governor DeSantis took over, there were 260,000 more Democrats than Republicans. Last year, we surpassed Democrats for the first time. In history, and now we have 140,000 more Republicans and Democrats. So there's been a 400,000 uh, registration flip from in terms of Republican or Democrats going to Republicans. And that shows we're fighting for freedom and it's working. And frankly, you're seeing numbers. Christian, thanks a lot. And those are a lot of topics. You mentioned a lot of topics that we want to get to. Tara, uh, for 90 seconds, give us a, your view on which party best defends freedom. You know, freedom is not even defined in our U.S. Constitution, nor are political parties even mentioned. Yet the divisiveness of the parties prompted our framers to remind us to honor and pursue national unity and put away uh, party over country. And in the arc of our uh, country's history, both political parties have advanced freedom. But today, if you look through the lens of the Constitution, it's difficult to afford the Republicans any grace. Their strategies have undercut uh, America's trust in government and most importantly, our trust in each other. And what's most troubling is how that has affected the Supreme Court of the United States, a very Republican and, and politicized institution now. And it's been burdened by national distrust and its reputation is now one of the most politicized courts in history. And, and we've had a twisted understanding of liberty through the hands of the Republican Party. This is especially true as we witness the gutting of our right to privacy and the dismantling of the constitutional barriers between church and state. So the reality is that those national initiatives coupled with the republicanly controlled florida legislature um, and their attacks on public education voting rights intellectual freedom lgbtq rights it paints a dire picture it's not a celebrated litany of freedom fighters so republican loyalists are no longer showing fidelity to the concept of liberty and the blessings of liberty are promised in the constitution and they cannot be constrained uh, by a party affiliation and the advancement of freedom, the advancement of liberty are, are best seen to the Democratic Party. Tara, thanks a lot. Uh, so Deborah, let's go to you. Uh, do you think that the, uh, the, re the Republican Party is at odds with the concept of freedom? No, we are not. And we put our trust in the Constitution. The framers of the Constitution put their trust in the people. So let's look at the people's choice. One million people within the United States have changed their party affiliation this year from Democrat to Republican. So I think they're voting with their voter registration for that freedom. Let's look at Wallet Hub. They recently uh, published an article. They gauge freedom in various and in independence in various states and the strength. Again, they go to households and jobs and numbers and feelings. And Florida is number six in terms of independence 
So let's look at science, let's look at people, let's put our trust in the people, and they are voting for freedom. Why have they nicknamed Florida the free state? Because we embody those values and benefits that are unique to America. Mike, do you think that the fact that so many people are moving here indicates that Florida, for instance, under Governor DeSantis, is a, is a beacon of freedom? And I wonder about what Christian said, too, in which he said that there is a war on women from the Democratic side. What would you say? They're moving here because uh, we don't have a state income tax. And I would say that both Christian and Deborah are wrong in the fact that one of the basic concepts that people in this country believe in is majority rule. That doesn't happen anymore. It doesn't happen in the Florida legislature. It doesn't happen in the U.S. Uh, Congress. And it doesn't happen with the Supreme Court at all. The Republican Party, the Supreme Court, is out of step of the will of the American people in every one of the issues that we will be talking about, from abortion to gun control to CRT to don't say gay. The Republican Party has co-opted this country with a minority view that is out of step with America. And I'm not saying this as, as someone who is a Democrat. I have voted for Republicans in the past. I voted for Democrats in the past. I voted for independents. But these days, with the Electoral College and gerrymandering, they're able to get laws passed that are out of sync with America. So, Mike, let's uh, go back to you for this one, and, and I want everybody to talk about abortion. The Supreme Court decision on abortion uh, leaves it now up to the states. There's no longer the federal right to abortion. And I wonder, what does that say about freedom? How does, how does the Supreme Court's decision, do you, how do you view it in terms of freedom? Me? Well, it's, it's simple. 63% of Americans uh, favor Roe v. Wade. Even John Roberts, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, was not ready to go as far as the radical conservatives on the Supreme Court to abolish Roe v. Wade. He went for the 15-week Mississippi rule. But they are out of step, and they are trying to put a spin on this that they are doing the will of the people. They are doing what the Constitution requires them to do. That is just not true and they're limiting people's ability to have freedom, to have a choice. How can the Republican Party say it's in favor of freedom and gives more freedom to people and protects women when women have lost their right for a choice when it comes to reproductive issues? Uh, Deborah, do you think that uh, the pregnancies, do you agree that pregnancies are now under the control of the government by the Supreme Court decision? Absolutely not. And even Justice uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg said that the, um, the Supreme Court decision was flawed. Okay, it did not belong in the Supreme Court. It belonged in the states with the people. Um, we lost nothing in terms of rights with this decision. All it did was turn it back to the state. Actually, Roe was originally a first trimester decision. It became all the way through pregnancy and even after birth in some states. It's been returned to the people. That's the freedom. It changed absolutely nothing in this state or any other state except to return it to the people. All right. So, uh, Tara, do you think that the decision actually changed nothing? And, and do you think that women now are second class citizens? I think that this is a, a craziness. When all six of the U.S. Supreme Court justices were asked at their confirmation hearings if there was an implied right to privacy, they all agreed there was. And now that they have a political and ideological majority, they've decided that 50 years of case precedent isn't the, the, the reality. I would invite everyone who's watching to read the Ninth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution that says uh, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights does not deny or disparage the rights held to the people. So forgive me for saying that it's returned to the states, it's actually returned to the people. And that is uh, something that we need to keep in mind. And if they really wanted to embrace original jurisdiction and original intent, then I welcome them to look at the Ninth Amendment. And I welcome all of you to do the same. All right, Christian, what do you think uh, about the Supreme Court decision on abortion versus via as it relates to women and, and people's freedom? Well, the Ninth Amendment was just cited about getting the power back to the people. And there's no greater way and pushing any decision or any, you know, when it comes to our government down to the states. And that's exactly what this did. Every individual state can make their own decisions. You know, I didn't see the uproar from the left when the uh, Obamacare decision came out. And uh, there were, you know, they weren't, so somehow they weren't liberal activists then. 
but now we're attacking conservatives when they make a decision on this. And all this does is send it back to the states. Now the people, literally the people, that's about as close as you can get without going county by county, the people can make the decision on how they wanna handle abortion in their states. And I think that's about as free as you get because when these when the founders set up our country, they wanted everything to go back to the states or as much to go back to the states as they possibly could. And that's what we're seeing now. Deborah, Kristen, uh, may I ask you and Deborah each a question though? You talk about giving it back to the people. That same court the week before said in the New York concealed weapons case that it could not go back to the states, that it had to be a uniform law. The height of hypocrisy from the court on the New York state gun control issue, v. Roe v. Wade, is so outstanding and overwhelming, it makes your head spin. How does that give it back to the people, Christian, Kristen? why don't you take that one? So uh, very clearly, if you look at the U.S. Constitution, there actually is a right in there for the Second Amendment and to be able to possess guns. Uh, you do not find the same exact right as explicit as, uh, I mean, the Second Amendment couldn't be more clear. You do not see that for abortion. And previously you said, hey, majority rules. Well, guess what? We have more Republicans and Democrats in the state of Florida. So the decisions that Florida makes, hopefully you'll agree with, as we discuss these other issues as we go forward. But, but Christian, that, that Second Amendment also says well-regulated militia. And the, the, the how other does piece, that- Bob, The other piece, Rob, is that if we don't believe in implied rights of the Constitution, then judicial review, which is the implied right of the, the Supreme Court to review the other branches of government, wouldn't, wouldn't hold up. So the very power that the Supreme Court has to decide Roe v. Wade and Dobbs and New York is all based on an implied power. So this is an illusory conversation. Okay, let, let's move on to another topic. I wanna to talk about what's being taught in schools and, and start with uh, Deborah on this one. We have the parental rights bill, which is also known as the don't say gay bill. Uh, it restricts what teachers can and can't say about gender in the classrooms. We also have a ban on teaching critical race theory in classrooms. Uh, talk about that in terms of freedom. Does this help uh, the move towards freedom? Absolutely. I think you remove the freedom of parents to parent their children when you put the teachers in charge of teaching uh, sex education in elementary school. That is a parental right. I don't want a teacher teaching heterosexual or any other sex to a child in those very fragile uh, years. And whether it's CRT and teaching them to be ashamed that they are white or ashamed that they are black uh, or better because they are one color or another, those are um, not the basis of education. The basis of education is to teach our children curriculum that will help them in their future lives and leave the parenting to parents. Mike, uh, the ban on uh, critical race theory and also the limits on what can be said about gender, how do you view it? Well, first of all, critical race theory that uh, was put in uh, under DeSantis was a, a, a problem that didn't exist looking for a solution that is a political uh, advantage for DeSantis. It wasn't being taught in the schools in Florida, in some colleges perhaps, but not in the schools. And taking this one step further, in Texas they have introduced a bill that will now say that slavery is involuntary relocation. That's what they want taught in Texas. That is so preposterous, it's unbelievable. And with the don't say gay bill, it's supposed to be just for younger kids, but school boards throughout the state of Florida are warning, warning their teachers to take down rainbow signs, whether they're teaching in uh, the elementary school or secondary education. It's just, it's just uh, a craziness that is extending throughout the school systems that is not happening. They're told to take down the pictures if they have a spouse of the similar sex that they can't put it on their um, uh, desk anymore. It is just how you guys can say that the Republican Party expands freedom when it's choking off freedom at every chance it can get. And there's not even the problem in some of the laws that have been passed by the ultra conservative Florida legislature. And it doesn't go to the will of the people, Christian, even though there may be more registered Republicans now than Democrats in the state. There's also 28% that are independents in the state, and that doesn't go to the will of the people. Christian, let me get you uh, in on this. Uh, is the Republican Party choking off freedom when it comes to classrooms? 
No. So first of all, what Mike is saying, he's very uninformed, uh, specifically when it comes to critical race theory in classrooms. I'd encourage him to go watch a brain pop video about George Floyd that was available to third graders. Um, and during that video, which was actually a cartoon, it goes through and talks about defunding the police. It talks about praising George, George Floyd, turning kids into political activists. And then it also highlights systematic racism and dives into that, which are the key components of critical race theory. And so he's wrong there. But number two, as to your question about freedom, look, I have a eight-year-old, a six-year-old and a three-year-old. I want to be able to have those hard discussions with my children, whether it comes about sex or comes about racism. I don't need an adult having those conversations and specifically with the parental bill of rights and edu or the parental rights and education bill, which somehow even this, I guess, you know, Rob, even you fell for the tagline. It's not the don't say gay bill. It's actually the parental rights and education bill. And all that did was say that a grown adult cannot talk to my K through third, uh, third grader, which all three of my kids are right around that age. They can't talk to them about sex without me knowing. I mean, that is so insane that Democrats have embraced that. And if you look at polling, actually, Democrat voters, overwhelmingly independents and Republicans, overwhelmingly oppose allowing kids K through three to hear about sex from adults without their parents knowing. So that's what Mike is advocating for. Let's just be very clear here. That's what he's advocating for. We oppose it. That is not true. That's that not that is I mean. not true. That that is not true. Okay, let let's, me let's just say if the Republican Party is so interested in parental rights, then why did they deny parents? I'm a mother of four, the opportunity to have vaccines for children under five. It's inconsistent. And quite frankly, I think in our school systems, we don't have uh, educators advocating in ways um, that you're talking about. They're sharing their lives. They're connecting with their their students in ways that are outside of what you're describing and sharing someone's life, their pictures of their spouse or their children or discussing their families is uh, quite frankly uplifting to other students that might have the same families at home. So I think it's a mischaracterization of what happens as in education and as an educator, CRT is, is an, illus an illusion. I teach at a college level. We talk about structural um, opportunities for success through the constitution, but we don't bastardize it. Why are you so upset that it's getting removed then? You should not be upset, number one. I actually think this is, I think it's a, an illusion. You're creating a way to beat over academicians' heads about something that's not true. We teach students about the Constitution, which I would welcome to teach the Republican Party. And, and Christian, I just got to clarify, is, is that brain pop video, is that part of the Florida curriculum or is that just available on the internet? No, no, that's part of the curriculum. Brain pop is used here in Sarasota County. It was used until my wife got notified by a parent we threw that video up online. People went crazy in the public. I can't believe this is inside the schools. And guess what? They removed it. And now you have to have parental permission to watch that. So Brain Pop, go watch the George Floyd video. It is a cartoon about systematic racism and defunding the police and praises Minneapolis defunding the police. That's going on okay. for third graders all in right, Florida. All right, all right. It's part of the curriculum, I say. Okay, let me ask about mask, mask, mask and vaccine mandates. Uh, the governor uh, and the legislature passed a law that private employers uh, are prohibited from having vaccine mandates, that government entities may not require COVID-19 vaccinations for anyone, including employees, that educational institutions may not require students to be COVID-19 vaccinated, and that school districts may not have school face masks policies. And Tara, let's start with you on this one. The, the governor's approach to mandates when it comes to COVID-19. You know, the central issue in any public health debate is always the conflict between public health goals and individual rights, right to privacy, uh, security of person, personal autonomy, all of that is at risk. What's difficult to understand in Florida and with our governor is the mix, mixed message of wanting to honor these rights as it relates to max, masks and vaccines, but not to honor those rights when it comes to the sovereignty of a woman's body, um, privacy rights of loving the same, loving the same sex. Um, I think it's very difficult and sends mixed messages about what freedom is and whether you can uh, really embrace in the Republican Party in the state of Florida um, and really honor these mask and vaccine directives as something coming from a place of uh, of really looking at liberty or if it's really just political. And Christian, the governor successfully passed this law against mandates. Uh, what do you think? I think it's good. Um, when we're looking at here, I mean, the, the mandates, these were being forced on individuals. All we're saying is that individuals should be able to make their own decision. And I'll tell you, the governor, it's interesting when you come to, when you talk about COVID vaccines, 
is when the vaccine came out, the governor was out there working hard to make sure people had access to the vaccine if they decided to take it. He had so many stops that Democrats and liberals and the media were attacking him, saying he was using vaccine for political purposes. That's how much he was promoting it. Um, but all he was doing was giving people, giving citizens the access to it, and then allowing them to make the decision. But once people started getting fired for it, I mean, I have a family member that was a police officer. Here she got married and she was about to, she's trying to have a, actively trying to have a baby. And she got laid off as a law enforcement officer in another state because of the vaccine. And all the governor's doing is saying that's wrong. People should not be punished for the decisions that they make as an individual. And he's just blocking that. But as for people, if they decide to get the vaccine, that's on you. You can get the vaccine if you want. All right, Mike, what do you think about the governor and the state legislature moving towards uh, banning mask mandates and vaccine mandates? And we only have 40 seconds. Okay, it's crazy. I'm old enough because I'm older than most that in the 50s, I had the polio vaccine in school. I don't even know if my parents signed a parental uh, permission slip. We had a health crisis. I had friends who died of COVID, some of whom were anti-vaxxers and said, ah, I don't need this. And now we have the governor uh, not allowing uh, the vaccine to come in for kids under four. I've got a four-year-old grandson, under five rather. It is absolutely crazy. We have a health crisis in this country. We have to look for the common good and, and protect our country rather than the individual rights that sometimes do have to be inhibited. All right, well, I, I have four more topics and we're out of time and uh, I hope you come back and maybe we'll do this again. Before we go, what other news story should we be paying attention to? And Christian, let's start with you, the other big story of the week. I think when you, uh, just today, the Emerson College um, released a poll and Trump is up over Biden by 5%. I don't know if Trump's ever been up over anyone by 5% in a reported poll. Uh, that's huge. Obviously, Biden is failing. We're looking at record inflation, record gas prices, and we're starting to see his scores come out not doing so well lately. All right. Tara, you're the big story. Uh, I think we need to be watching uh, the Florida civics literacy exam. It's an exam that became required of all high school and college graduates in the state of Florida. That looks like the Republicans are using the, the whole strategy of using exams to push um, right-leaning ideas through an exam, a graduation exam. And I think that the grassroots movement is going to be pushing up against it. Deborah, you're the big story. Well, it was a birthday week for uh, our phenomenal first lady, Casey DeSantis. It was a birthday week a week ago for our amazing Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nunez. Uh, on her birthday, she formed Mamas for DeSantis. So for all you ladies out there that uh, use these amazing, they are strong, they are brilliant, they are involved, they're moms, and uh, yet they're still gracious and they still behave and act like ladies and they are the personification of American women. Um, join Mamas for DeSantis. All right, well, Mike, your other big story is that the Republican Party is uh, running on fear of no longer being a majority party. 53% of uh, Floridians are white. In 2040, it will drop where white people will be in the minority. It seems like it's far away. In 18 years, the white people in Florida and the white males of the Florida legislature are scared to death of that, and they're doing everything they can to hold on to that majority and make the laws so they will be in control long past when they are a majority. And once again, majority will not rule. Hey, thank you all for a civil discussion. And this is one of those shows where I wish that we could go on for another two hours because there's so much that we left unsaid. But thank you for participating. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having us, Rob. Thanks, Rob.